This is a production of Cornell University. Uh, so in today's seminar, I'm going to talk about the agronomic effects, which includes uh, benefits and costs or trade-offs of disease resistance in maize hybrids with a focus on northern leaf blight as a case study. <clears throat> Some foliar diseases uh, can have a negative impact on maize yield. For example, northern leaf blight uh, caused by the foliar pathogen Cetosphoria torsica is a major endemic foliar disease uh, that can cause <clears throat> serio serious yield losses in maize growing regions worldwide. In the US and Canada alone, this disease was responsible for roughly 14 million uh, ton uh, losses in 2015. So this information highlights the importance of resistance breeding to minimize the negative impact of this disease. <clears throat> Genetic resistance uh, is an effective and sustainable uh, disease management strategy, but it can be associated with uh, cost with yield costs or trade-offs. However, the agronomic effects of resistance or maybe this relationship is not universal because the agronomic effects of resistance are variable and must be studied on a case-by-case -case basis. In maize, for instance, <clears throat> in the presence, yes, or an absence, no, of three different diseases, anthracnose, stall rot, northern leaf blight, and southern leaf blight, where neurosogenic lines with a single disease QTL uh, were tested in the ASR and the SLB case, and several cycles of recurrent selection uh, were used in the NLB case. Uh, resistant plants show with yield benefits in the presence of the disease. In the absence of the disease, uh, those resistant plant or the yield of those resistant plants were, uh, was not affected in the ASR and the NLB uh, case. However, some modest, modest uh, yield cost associated with resistance alleles were observed in the SLB case. Uh, this result uh, confirms that the yield effects of resistance are variable across different uh, maize pathosystems. Uh, extra layers of complexity when studying and managing the trade-offs are the underlying genetics and the, and the environment. Pleiotropy or linkage are the genetic forces that underlie the trade-off, but epistasis and GYE and also important factors that add to the inherent uh, variability of this phenomenon. Since we already know that the effects of disease resistance are variable uh, and are case specific, I am focusing on three uh, specific or overarching questions to measure the direction on magnitude of the potential effect of NLB resistance specifically. That is, is it positive, is it negative, or is it neutral? <clears throat> I am quantifying these potential effects by uh, evaluating crop performance in the uh, presence of the disease, the artificially inoculated condition, and in the absence of the disease, the uninoculated counterpart. I am uh, initially focusing on three agronomic traits, yield, stag lodging, and maturity. I'm also interested in investigating what are the effects of selection for yield on NLB resistance and trade-offs. The premise that uh, through natural and artificial selection, farmers and plant breeders have been strongly selecting for resistance alleles whose benefits outweigh the cost is biologically sound. However, this logic hasn't been tested uh, experimentally. I wish to test this hypothesis, taking advantage of the Genomes to Field initiative, which is uh, testing uh, hybrid populations in many environments in North America. Although my <clears throat> NLB trial was planted over six years in a single location here in New York State, the G2F initiative provides unique opportunities to study several aspects of NLB resistance uh, in maize hybrids. So in the next slides, I will present my results 
on agronomic effects, association studies, and high throughput phenotyping. In the 2014 population alone, uh, it seems that <clears throat> NLB resistance has no yield penalty uh, or in, the, in the absence of the disease, as revealed by this uh, positive slope from a regression between the grain yield measured in the uninoculated uh, trial and NLB resistance as measured in the inoculated uh, trial. I observe a similar tendency across years when looking at the hybrids altogether. The colored dots uh, represent a specific uh, hybrid sets or groups. And in the future, I will be checking the specific tendency for each of them. But all in all, uh, these results are in agreement <clears throat> with a study, with two studies, uh, which report that selection for NLV resistance didn't compromise the yield potential in the absence of this disease. Uh, in my exploratory uh, association study, using only the 2014 hybrid population, I didn't uh, find significant uh, GWAS hits for NLV resistance. However, this SNP that uh, stands out above the towering on chromosome 8 seems to co-localize with a known NAM uh, NLBQTL. And I expect that uh, improvements to the GWAS models will increase the power of this study or this analysis. However, I did uh, detect significant SNPs for grain moisture, root lodging, and stock lodging under NLB pressure. So the stack lodging results are the most interesting because they resonate with a study which report that selection for NLB resistance reduce stack lodging under NLB pressure. Now, in regard to the high throughput, high throughput phenotyping, uh, I am uh, extracting a multispectral vegetation uh, indices from aerial images. I am focusing on two different types of germplasm, neuroisogenic lines, and of course, the G2F hybrids. Uh, although the germination was not uniform and the soil background noise was high in the needle plot, uh, I decided to start my uh, analysis uh, in this particular germplasm because uh, it contains integrations that harbor uh, key NLB QTLs. <clears throat> I'm also using these uh, vegetation indices to uh, study uh, disease complex, uh, these foliar disease complexes to identify multiple disease resistant, uh, resistant lines. Uh, <clears throat> so I am uh, making the most of, uh, of, uh, not, uh, of the natural occurrence of northern leaf spot and anthracnose leaf blight, plus the, the artificial inoculated NLB, which is my target disease, to, uh, to assess overall plant health. I am using this metric, uh, relative area under the disease progress curve, which will represent the cumulative effects of, of these three co-occurring diseases. I then uh, compare this IUDPC to the indices that I extracted from the aerial images of my needle plot. <clears throat> the correlation between these two metrics uh, show that uh, a significant uh, negative uh, relationship, which makes sense because the higher the NLB, the disease severity, so the lower the, the index value. Uh, it was, in, it was uh, interesting to see that the well-known and widely used NDVI was outperformed by the other uh, vegetation indices. Although significant, uh, this uh, correlation seems to be uh, low compared to, the, to those reported in the literature. So I think that the uh, relatively or the high uh, background noise observed in the nil plots contributed to these relatively uh, low correlations. So I'm expecting that when I analyze the G2F plot, which was highly uniform, uh, this uh, 
uh, correlations are going to leak, uh, are going to be stronger because the soil background noise won't be an issue. Uh, to wrap up, uh, my preliminary uh, results suggest that NLB resistance show no yield penalties and may have some agronomic benefits, for example, stock lodging resistance. The multispectral <clears throat> uh, vegetation indices could be used for high throughput phenotyping of multiple disease resistance. Some of my <clears throat> future uh, undertakings will include the multi-year analysis of the, of the G2F hybrids and use the vegetation indices to improve the GWAS models and also use them as yield predictors to uh, study NLV trade-offs more accurately and also include a spatial correction and environmental covariates in my uh, statistical models because the inoculated and uninoculated trials are located in distant fields in the same farm. I'd like to express my gratitude to the, my special committee and, and to all the uh, smart and kind people who have helped me with my research, especially Judy Goldman, who collected the G2F uh, field data that I used to put together this presentation. Uh, this concludes my talk. Uh, thank you very much for your attention, and I'll be happy to take uh, questions. Ed Buckler asks, has hybrid vigor been related to resistance? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, that has been related to resistance. Uh, yeah, so I'm expecting to find some good levels of resistance in this hybrid uh, population. Yeah, but I'm more interested, of course, on um, looking if the, that resistance that occurs uh, either naturally or through artificial selection has some uh, deleterious effect on yield. So the initial analysis seems that maybe it's not deleterious when the disease is not present. Thank you. And Shataya Mikersa asks, what was your GWAS model and the threshold for declaring significant MTA? MT, um... Yeah, I used, uh, of course, I corrected for population structure and also included a kinship matrix and five PCs. Yeah, but as sometimes it's very difficult to deal with uh, NLB resistance initially. So I wasn't able to, to find significant GWAS heaps in my first uh, GWAS models because the uh, phenotypic uh, or the disease phenotypes are usually skewed. So I need to improve or maybe resort to some uh, statistical tweaks. Uh, but in the other uh, traits where I was able to identify uh, the GWAS, significant GWAS hits, yeah, I was able, I used essentially the same uh, GWAS model. And yeah, I was successful in, in getting these uh, significant hits. And I use, of course, Bonferroni and, and false discovery rate as my threshold. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.